for The Hill, our sister company. So she's here on a Friday working. We're glad to have you, Judy. Thank you. Uh, you know, nobody wants to do these segments about the president's son. Um, but when you've got a White House that just won't even answer basic questions about it, are we kind of forced to? <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, Hunter Biden basically makes a living out of lying low at this point, but it's really not shocking that he's not going to want to weigh in on this. And the White House certainly is not going to want to extend this news cycle by commenting on these Hunter Biden stories. They don't want to draw more attention to it. But at the same time, I think these stories aren't going to go away on their own. Uh the question in the briefing room was from my old colleague, Peter Ducey, over at Fox News. He was referring to a book by a Politico author who we interviewed earlier this week. Take a listen to what he said. Uh, this is a pattern that really dates back to Joe Biden's first term in the Senate uh, and some controversy over some bank loans that his brother got back then uh, continues down uh, to even this summer with Hunter Biden's foray into painting. And so uh, this has been a theme uh, of Biden's public career really from the start. Okay, so where does it go from here? We, we have all this reporting. The White House just simply says, we're not commenting on it, shuts it down, or we saw Jen Psaki deflecting. Do you just have to keep waiting for the drip, drip, drip? Well, I think there's no question at this point that Hunter Biden was engaged in influence peddling when his father was vice president. But unless there's firm evidence that somehow ties Joe Biden to Hunter Biden's business dealings, whether he was profited off of them, had a hand in them, in, influenced them in some way, uh, I think this is going to continue to be a back burner issue for the media. You'd think influence peddling involving the vice president, uh, Libya, China, Russia, Ukraine, some of our largest adversaries in the now president's son would not be a back burner issue. You'd think that the New York Times would have dozens of investigative reporters on it. In fact, they did uh, when it involved President Trump and his kids. Why is this a back burner? Is there just not enough evidence? Uh, I think there is a lack of evidence, of firm evidence uh, in this case, and there's a lot going on that the media is covering. Um, I think for the White House, this is like a low-level headache at this point. It's not quite migraine status yet. Fair. Uh, the, the painting, uh, Hunter selling his paintings didn't really help uh, that migraine status. I guess this would be the question, what would, what would bring this to be on the front burner, if you will, for the White House. What's the White House's nightmare? I think if more does come out um, from this, from these emails, then we could be uh, asking a lot more questions of the White House about this issue. You mentioned uh, Hunter Biden's paintings. He's trying to sell them for half a million dollars. Maybe he'll start talking more when uh, those are up for sale, up for auction. It seems that when he's trying to promote something like his memoir that came out a few months ago, that's when uh, he suddenly is much more visible. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, it, from that interview with Ben, uh, this has been a theme of Biden's public career from the start. At some point, perhaps the American public either expect it or just have it baked in. Hey, Judy, it's great to see you. Thank you. Have an awesome weekend, all right? Thank you. You as well, Elon. All right. We'll be right back.